minutes to go. Let's 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 Welcome back to day seven of these incredible World Judo Championships here in Tokyo. Now the greatest judo event on earth has now moved home. And this bit has been an amazing World Championships, I can tell you, with world champions so far from eight different countries. There are three uh, golds for France, there are three golds for Japan, and the rest are spread out. Judo has never been better. Now, this final day of the individual competition sees our super heavyweights taking to the mat, hoping for world glory. To introduce our re uh, repercharge finals, semi finals, and all the medal matches is my co commentator, Sheldon Franco Rooks. Good evening, Neil, and good evening, everyone at home. The first of the repercharge contests in the plus 78 kilo category features Beatrice Souza of Brazil. She's up against Irina Kinzerska of Azerbaijan. It'll be Souza in the white Jadogi, Kinzerska in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Yevgeny Vraklin of referee Russia. Russia. Neil was talking about the spread of medals. Three gold medals for Japan, three for France. There's an interesting point. I haven't shared it with Neil yet, but as far as the men are concerned, only Ono Shoe in the under 73 kilo category has been able to retain his world title. We've got new title holders in 60, 66, 81, 90, 100. The only one who can possibly hold on to it is Guram Tusishvili. So the maximum men holding on to their titles is two, whereas in the women, Billa did repeated, Abe repeated. Of course, yes, yes. We, yes. we, we had a new one in Daguchi Krista, or Krista Daguchi. Yeah. And then it was Clarice Begnin, who after that, again, it was new ones with marie Eve Gahi and Madeleine Malonga. Well, the spread has been amazing, Terrific. hasn't it? It really has. What an international world championships this is. And it's the um, highest contended world championships as well, as far as numbers are concerned, because there's 839 contestants altogether, 509 men, 330 ladies and that's 147 countries <laughs> for anybody out there that's a big world championships and that was a big effort on the uh, right side there from Beatrice Souza she's a bit placid when you get to to talk to her it's, a, it's amazing because you know this is these are super heavyweights but she's very very gentle when you chat to her and you wonder till you get on the map with her well I suppose <laughs> you know she could do with being a little bit tougher you know that doesn't necessarily trans transmit there but Kinzerska he's tough all round yeah I mean both of them come out all out attacking here the main aim of course is to throw your opponent flat on their back or to hold them down for 20 seconds arm lock or strangle for a submission and they are the main ways that you can win and uh, there's penalty system as well and we'll point out for the non judoka out there exactly what the penalty system is and how it works as we go along it's small infringements actually that get you uh, what we call shidos and three shidos can be a disqualification but 
Mostly, I think that uh, Shido's given for not attacking at the right time or being too passive. Some of you who are more avid judo fans and have watched the broadcast over a number of years will remember Irina Kinzerska in a previous incarnation competing for Ukraine, but she's been with Azerbaijan for a while now, and Azerbaijan trying to beef up their women's program, not least of all because it's part of the Olympic team event. Yeah, we've got and the these World Championships. Well, we've team got event. we've yeah. got that uh, same format tomorrow with the teams. We have a team competition, and uh, well, Sh well, Sheldon and I will try and explain it to you. Uh, there are three categories, weight categories in the uh, ladies, and three in the men. So you have six um, six person teams, and uh, the weight categories. Some of the weight categories are mixed together. Single Shido against Beatrice Souza. We've got a little under two minutes left to go. No score as yet. Difficult to say who is shading it. Maybe, maybe Souza, despite the fact that she's picked up that penalty. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a close match. Of course, this rapid charge match is a, a result of losing in the quarterfinals. So they lost in the quarterfinals and it means that they have to come back down, do a final repercharge match, and then that qualifies them, that the winner, that is, for a bronze medal match against the losing semi-finalist from the opposite side. Oh, Osadagari, it's gonna be a score. Now then, Wazari scored from Sousa. Sousa, in the end, well, she was pushing hard for that. I don't think that, uh, well, that's not quite a hold down. She was turned all the way onto a front, but that was a good score. Two Wazaris would finish this. So another throw like this, or a bit bigger, will finish it all together. Just managing to hang on to the arm as well, wrapping that up just by the elbow and then going over with that Makikomi action. So she leads with a little over a minute left to go. Not quite ready there. Kinzaska now she is and we get back underway. Kinzerska will know that she's got to come forwards now and really t start taking some chances. This is a really good fight from Salza. She's playing everything right here, doing everything right, should I say. And that's it, bit, it's yeah. going to be all over. Yeah. Wazali was at Yapon, and that movement there finishes it all off. Change of direction there from Salza. She did a Sasai Surakomeash on the opposite flank and over Kinzerska went. I mean, that was a good win, wasn't it, against a very seasoned campaigner? Yeah, I think that Kinzerska would have come into that contest slightly more of a favourite, irrespective of what the rankings were. I'm not going to look at them now, but, you know, she was the more experienced of the two. But the Brazilians stepped up there, to be honest, put in a, a good performance, came up with two scoring techniques and that was enough for her to find her way into the bronze medal contest yeah they've got depth haven't they the brazilians in the plus 78 kilos category they've got um, also altherman who's in the semi-final so they've got two possibilities of a rostrum i mean it could all go wrong <laughs> but um let's hope it doesn't for them so the makikomi you can see the highlights just drives towards the mat and she has good control of the arm and it's a heavyweight technique sort of Makikomi it's one that they seem to do it's a more of a winding throw and that particular Sasai to Surakomi Ash is a winding throw as well two winding throws two Wazaris and she goes through to fight for third place that's our favorite shot Neil it's a great shot we have this shot after, uh, and we've actually, I mean, Sheldon will probably explain it more. We've got uh, cameras all the way around the stadium to create that shot. And uh, it takes the pictures all right at the uh, uh, right time. And we catch them in mid-flight. We catch every angle of the throw. Absolutely wonderful. We come now to the second of the repechage contest in the plus 78 kilo cate category. Asahina Sala of Japan faces Larissa Cherik of Bosnia-Herzegovina 
Asahina in the white Jirogi, Cherik in blue. The referee in the middle for this one will be Roberta Cioglio of Italy. Well, world ranked two and three, and they pick up their world rankings. All of these athletes, all of the judoka, pick up their world rankings from the world um, qualifying events all around the world, the uh, IJF events, and they get medals, they get their world ranking up, and of course it seeds them for the major events. It doesn't always reflect that they are the best in the category in the world, because then we have world champions that... Uh, so, for example, Sarah Asahina here is the, was the uh, world champion from last year. She was the defending world champion. She's obviously lost her title, she's here, but she is world ranked number two. And on their head-to-heads here, they've met six times. This is the seventh time that they've met. And Sarah Asahina has won on each of those occasions. It's possible that Asahina would swap most of those wins for this one. She needs this win to get into the bronze medal contest. And then after that, she needs the bronze medal contest as, as well. She has to find her way to the podium because in the semi-final, Sone, uh, Sone Akira, the other Japanese heavyweight, is there already. Can't afford for that gap to get too big. The Japanese haven't decided yet who it is that's going to take that spot next year. But this is going to weigh very, very heavily. Yeah, I mean, such is the uh, situation in Japan. They have so much depth in each of the weight category. They can put two people in two of the categories. So they've got a lot of depth here. They've got Sone, who's just the youngster, came through. She's in the semi-final. Sarah Asahina lost in the quarters. So the best she can do is bronze medal. But Sone hasn't got the medal yet, has she? <laughs> but, no, there's still, there's still no. a possibility that Asahina could end up on the podium and not Sone. She could lose the semi-final and then lose the bronze medal match, Sone. Whereas Asahina could win this and the bronze medal match and the party's on. <laughs> yeah, she's a, a two-time world champion now, Asahina, because she won the open weight, yeah, uh, open weight right. as well. She won the open weight. They have an open weight tournament where, theoretically speaking, you can the, even the lightweights could enter, but uh, that doesn't happen, of course. It's always <laughs> the uh, heavyweights and the super heavyweights that tend to uh, gravitate to that tournament. I always used to think that was uh, more than unfair because I always used to think they had more of a crack of a world title, an extra crack, should I say, than the middleweights. We just had the middleweight event. That sounds like sour grapes, doesn't it? It, it did a bit, but yeah, I, th bit. I thought I'd, I'd leave you that. Let, just, let, yeah, yeah, just let me just go on it. Neil having a chat. <laughs> <laughs> No scorers yet, just a single Shido uh, against Asahina. And we've got just a little over half the contest come. I agree with you completely because there are a number of times when I've seen medal winners, they're double world champions, and you only got one shot at it. Yeah, no, you're quite right. Well, it used to be the same at the Olympics as well. Asahina making hard work of this. Cherik having fought her on a number of occasions. That's better. That's it. It's all over. Yeah. That's seven. Number seven, I'm afraid, because that uh, Sasai sort of Komiyashi there puts Cherik flat on her back. Absolutely. Looks up at the sky there, Asahina, and she's got all her supporters right the way, just behind us here. And uh, they're all dressed in yellow up in the crowd here, and they're all going absolutely mad. Yeah, that's from, from her company. Well, part one is, is finished. There's another part to come. What would be really difficult is if, that, if part two was Sonny losing in her semi-final and dropping down into her half. And then you'd get the head-to-head, <laughs> -head, wouldn't you? Were they in opposite halves of the draw? No, no, they were in the same, in the same side. Okay, so, so, so not she will. Happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah, so that, well, that's in, in fact that's a saving grace because you don't want to go head to head and then lose and, yeah. and not be on the podium. She has 
to be on that podium. Got one more gonna, fight to go. I was going to say, you can go head to head and win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember being in the same situation, you know, for one of the Olympics, my last one. But uh, I guess you just got to take your chances. Sasai Surakumiyashi there, and she just drives her over, like almost like a steering wheel action there with the hands. Look at that sleeve grip there. It redirects exactly where she wants to put her there. She just drives her onto her back for the full hip on. Once the foot has done its job, Asahina very, very quickly feels that and then begins to work the top half. You know, it, it's not the easiest thing to move such a big frame. She's a super heavyweight. But she's got good movement for a fighter of that kind of size and weight. You know, it's, yeah. it's, there's almost a, a degree of delicacy and touch in there with the way that the foot works. Yeah, and, and the great thing about it, it shows the kazushi, the, the pulling yeah. action, uh, just how it should be to make a technique work. And we had a good view there of uh, the whole of the company. They're all in yellow. You couldn't miss them. Big smile on her face, but she's still got one to go. Well... We've spoken about Sone Akira, and we're going to see her in the upcoming semi-final between Kyra Sayet of Turkey. She's up against Sone Akira of Japan. It'll be Sayet in the white jirogi, Sone in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Matthew Batai of France himself, a former super heavyweight. Here is Neil. Yeah, she looked good all, all day, actually, Sonny, but uh, uh, I've got to say that Sayed did as well. My only concern about uh, Kyra Sayed is her, the injury that she's carrying. I think she's got a foot injury, and it hampered her in a previous contest, and whether or not they may, they've been able to give her some treatment in the last... I don't know, two and a half or three hours that we had the break for. I don't know, but we shall see. There she comes now, taking to the tatami. Yeah, just a little bit gingerly walking out there. Say it. Well, you've got to go for it, haven't you? I mean, there's two, two matches that, I mean, she came out and won the two matches quickly on the ground. I remember the great Yoshihiro Yamashita at the Olympic Games. He got injured second match in, I think it was. Oh, look at that. Straight away, Wazari. Tayatoshi there from Sonny. And she's holding. Yeah, she fancies yeah, the Osakomi. Yeah, I mean, she'd been holding for about five seconds there, and he didn't call it. So she only has to hold for 10 seconds, and it's all over anyway. Say it will come down. And, uh, or go up, should I say, and she'll fight for third place. Sonny goes through, and she made that look easy, didn't she? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking that, and, and this is the impression that people are going to be left with. Oh, you know, look how easily Sonny won. If she, well, she, first of all, she's in the final, so we know that, that she will at least have a silver medal, even if she lost in the final, she, they, they're going to say, look how easy it was. But they fought different opponents. You know, there were different pressures. And even if they had fought exactly the same opponent, they could have, been, they could have brought different, you know, looks to, to the contest. So, uh, uh, anyway, it's up to the Japanese to determine how they're going to decide who, who it is and what pressures came to bear and why... You know, Sonny performed the way that she did and why Asahina performed the way that she did. But what we now know is that Sonny is going to be on that podium. And that was a beautifully executed left tire Toshi. Got into a terrific position. Classic as well. Stayed nice and upright throughout the whole technique. Look at that. Yeah, that direction hand there, the Saruti hand, the, uh, the lapel hand, just blasts her over, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Uh, position for it and then she just stayed there she never she wasn't going to move <laughs> and if i could have anyone or if i could be sitting next to anyone to describe the execution of a left tire toshi my choice would be oh he's sitting next to me well done <laughs> <laughs> neil adams yeah 
really. I mean, well, you know, you know. we were watching a, a, a demonstration of the kata of a, a karate kata earlier, and we, we always it gets judged on form. And you know, the nice thing about Tayatashi, when it's beautifully executed, it has everything working: the hands and the feet and the and the body. And it's about form. Look at that, nice form, and didn't quite get the elevation right. So it's more. Uh, and it, the thing is, Siyatoshi and Tayatoshi, often they're mistaken, you know. Siyatoshi tends to go just downwards, but uh, Tayatoshi just pulls the, the leg back slightly. And of course, she had the direction hand just right. We've got a second semi-final coming up next. It features Idalis Ortiz of Cuba. She's up against Maria Suelen Altman of Brazil. It'll be Ortiz in the white Jadogi, Altman in blue, the referee in the middle. For this one is Amano Akiko of Japan. Referee from Japan, this is Amano but Did I read that right? Did it say 16 times they'd met? Well, it's perfectly possible because we will add into the IJF World Tour the Continental Championships and they come from the same continent so over the last few years there may be an additional three, four, five meetings whenever just in the, just in the Continental Championships because these are the two two best super heavyweights yeah. in, in, in that region Well I've never seen um, a head-to-head -head count like that it's 16 and 0 to the Olympic champion of London, and that is Adelis Ortiz of Cuba. Now, this lady, the, uh, sorry, we're looking at Altham here, but um, Ortiz in white, and I've got to say that uh, when it comes to the big occasion, she's always there. Yeah, got a nice collection of medals, hasn't she? Including the Olympic title, as Neil just mentioned, from 2012. But then she regained her world title, didn't she, That's as right, well? Correct. And, um, you know, she uh, but just is an athlete, a really good, um, solid performer. And it's always on the big stage. And I, uh, I suspect that she's just going to drop, uh, she's going to snap that sleeve off in a minute and then try and go... Uh, left for the sea and Aggie because uh, and that's exactly what Ultimum can feel here she's just holding on trying to stop Ortiz from rotating underneath her yeah, Ortiz is the world number one by a long shot six world medals including two world titles and then she's got three Olympic medals she's got the set gold silver and a bronze. Looking to add to that, if she can, by coming back here next year. But concentration at the moment and getting past Maria Suel and Alferman to get into this final. Yeah, well, both of them just a little bit cagey, aren't they? That would make her fourth world final. She's won two of them. Picked up a silver in another. So if she makes this, fourth final for Idalis Ortiz. Well, neither one of them has attacked. Not, not one attack that even looks remotely as if it's going to throw. And that was very close there from Ultiman. And now Ortiz was uh, around the net there, but Ultiman just managed to shake it off. Yeah, it um, makes shocking reading, really. You know, the Ortiz Alderman head to head. I've never seen one like that. No, I haven't either. I mean, I, I thought it was a mistake uh, on it. I mean, normally it's three to one or four to five. I mean, the most uh, that I have uh, kind of knew before that was the uh, head to heads between um, uh, Aguiar and uh, Kayla Harrison. I think that was about, what was it, eight? Eight wins for Kayla. And, uh, I, I mean, it, that was the most. Four, four times they've...
gone head to head in the Pan American region. So, and that's not a surprise to me that they are, you know, streets ahead of the, the rest in that region. So you add that into mix. But even even if you took those out, here's a chance around the back with the hip. Oh, oh. now then. Now, did she uh, did her back make contact? Yeah. I, I think the referee yeah. will uh, ask for the screen shot. See, was that a direct attack? Now, you've got to uh, ask yourself whether it was a direct attack or a counter. Now, if it is a counter yeah. from Ortiz in the white, she can't use her back in order to gain leverage off the map. But, and, uh, and, and I don't think there was any chance of a score from Ortiz because Altherman went... Came, yeah. yeah, she... Altherman went... onto a front. Yes. So... so Ortiz no couldn't score. score, but what what was interesting was, did Altherman have a, have a, an attack before Ortiz had started? Because Ortiz went down on the on I, her back. I think though, you know, when you can't decide like that, best not to give a score, and that's exactly what they decided it, to do. Exactly, that that's how I read it, and that's what I, what yeah. I, that's what I was going to explain. No score there because there was no way of, de of really determining it. So that was best decision. 20 odd seconds left to go. Two penalties bit picked up by Altamont, one by Ortiz. She's just that little bit too clever, isn't she? Ortiz. Yeah. And the one really good effort over on the far side that she had, Ortiz demonstrated that she's still good enough to get off that. You know, she, she hasn't lost much since 2012. It's, it's much of the same, isn't it? And I, I, yeah. I think, you know, we, we see it with a lot of athletes. And I had the Egyptian uh, coach, dear friend, uh, came up to me uh, before we came on air. And he said, um, why are so many of the big names in this tournament not performing? And I said, well, I think, I think just nerves, oh. you know, the fact that it's a dress rehearsal for the Olympics. I think just nerves. But um, Ortiz doesn't seem to be one of those. She just performs the same. You know, and I think that that is a skill in itself to keep your nerves calm, whether it is the Pan American Games, whether it is the Olympic Games, whether it is a World Championships. She seems the same person that comes out every time. On, only once have these two ever fought. Oh, that's that a, was, yeah. Was Ari scored? She's yeah. through. I was going to say, only once have they ever fought outside of a medal match. Every time it's been in a you know, bronze medal or the final or whatever it is. And once again, Ortiz Just pulls it out the bag, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah. You know, so she knew exactly what she needed to do. And she goes out there and she does it. So in the final again. Dallas Ortiz. And one of the most consistent heavyweights ever. Alferman is going to have to compete for the bronze medal. So we have all the medals sorted. All the medal matches, should I say. I'll give you the lineup for those uh, medal matches now. Beatrice Souza of Brazil will go up against Kyra Seth of Turkey. It'll be Asahina Sara of Japan to face uh, Maria Suellen Altherman of Brazil. But the final is Idalis Ortiz of Cuba, the world number one, going up against Sone Akira of Japan. And this is the drop Cianaghi that did it. She just took her onto a side. So the uh, top part of the torso has to hit the ground to warrant a score. Just enough there on the side, yeah? Yeah, I mean, there is some talk about, you know, whether when it comes onto the front there, that it, is, it, is it side? But uh, the side hits first. Look at how, uh, and we're going to see it bit by bit here from our wonderful camera. Side hits without a shadow of a yeah, doubt there. Yeah. And uh, so warrants the score.
Well, T's had a bit of a cheering section up there with flags waving and everything. Right, we come now to the, the first of the repechage contests in the plus 100 kilo category. Henk Grohl of the Netherlands faces Rafael Silva of Brazil. It'll be Grohl in the white, Jadogi Silva in the blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Kostini Balash of Hungary. Just looking at the ages of uh, both uh, Silva and Grohl. 34 and 32, respectively. And so uh, they'll be 35, 33 by the time the next Olympic comes, uh, uh, the next Olympic Games comes along. Could only, could only happen in the heavyweight division, couldn't it? Well, I mean, normally, I suppose middleweights, you like weights, it, it tends to be younger. Uh, middleweights around about, I think, middleweights to light heavyweights, 28. And I think that the heavyweights, super heavyweights, uh, it's a little bit older. I suppose Ishii of Japan was the, you know, yeah. went against that rule, maybe. Well, became Yamashita, Olympic champion yeah. and then just decided Disappear, to stop. Yeah. Yamashita when he was young, I suppose. But normally, slightly more mature yes, athlete. Yes, absolutely. So Hank Grohl in white. And as you can see, a little bit of a difference in size. So he, he, he is up from minus 100 kilos and then decided he wanted to fight the heavyweights. He'd done so much world silver, European champion in the weight category below. And now he's taken on the big boys. Mm -hmm. Rafael Silva. I mean, I stood next to him in a lift and he had to duck to get into the lift. I've got a photograph of me standing next to him and it's comical. <laughs> He's just so huge. It's not coming across on the, no. on the screen there, but believe me, that is a mountain of a man. Well, I, I always say, just look at the referee and you'll see what, 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 what's, uh, what's out there. But I mean, Hank Grohl is um, two meters, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a reflection. But he's a good thrower as well, uh, Rafaela Silva. Grohl's got to play this a little bit more clever here. He's the one who should have better movement coming up from the the lower weight category. He's just got to make sure that he keeps up a good tempo and avoids picking up the penalty for passivity. Yeah, well, I don't think either one of them really has put anything major across. Yeah, he, he did duck underneath, yeah. I thought he'd escaped that. Well, he did too, so he was kind of had his head down there yeah. as if, you know, maybe I got away with this, but he didn't. He, he tried to tidy up pretty quickly, but only after he had ducked underneath. And it wasn't accidentally got out of there. Single Shido against Grohl, half the contest gone. That was close, Rafael Silva. Of course, there is some uh, talk. I mean, a lot of the ex-fighters are saying, well, why? have any kind of gripping restrictions really kind of agree with them in a way I, I think that the more you stop then the, the, you know it's so difficult to grip up on, on that jacket and that is 90 percent of our game i think personally that as long as it's positive and that you're trying to throw then it doesn't make any difference as long as you don't hold an orthodox grips for any length of time now the rule at the moment is don't hold it for any length of time but we really need to see more options for gripping that jacket. Grohl mortified at having picked up a penalty for crushing Silva. Oh, look at that. He's very close with that. Yeah, so did yeah. Komigoshi there. Just the sheer bulk of Rafael Silva is stopping him from going over. I'll go back to it. 
Silva's beginning to tire. Couldn't get the feet in the right place. Oh, yeah. no. Change of direction. If Grohl can keep up the energy, if he's got enough energy, he can knock Silva over here. Well, he's certainly going to need to be moving all the time. He cannot afford another penalty. There's one penalty just gone up to Silva. So he's already worked it back. And we saw this so many times over this World Championships. They go two Shido's down, it wakes them up, and then they start to go to work. Combination coming here from Grohl, looking to set things up. Well, for me, it's been all Grohl. You know, it's mm -hmm. Grohl uh, is the one that's initiating the movement. And Rafael Silva is just waiting. Wandering around. One big attack here, and he's just at the right time, Silva. He managed to get at least a movement in. Not sure if that was enough, to be honest. Grohl was out of there so quickly. Would it count as an attack? He's got to go in again. He knows yeah. he's got to go in again, Grohl. Nah. Just didn't have it, did he? You know, it just uh, the, the energy went, mm. and just the sheer bulk. And I, like I said, Rafael Silva has the ability to throw, and when he throws it in with all his weight behind it, he normally scores. Grohl just couldn't keep him out. Went over heavily at the end to Oji Gary, I think. Fought him well, though. Hank Grohl pushed him hard, but in the end, just couldn't keep Silver off him. Bit too powerful in the end. So it'll be Silver to compete in one of the bronze medal contests we're going to be back in a second with the second of the repechage contests in the plus 100 kilo category yeah it was always on the cards if he stayed still he had to keep moving Ouchi Gary just hops it. It's kind of Ouchi, and then he hops it through to an Uchi Mata. Yeah, yeah. But he does it well, doesn't he? He, he does it well, and he had control. Actually, he didn't even have the sleeve there, but there was su such good control of the upper part of the body, and then he drives him over onto his back. H Hank Grohl couldn't get off the leg either. That was it. And that little change there in the direction from the Ochigari towards the rear, just going off to the side for the Uchimata, I think, as Neil was saying, that was enough to bring Grohl down. And there's no, you can see there, no doubt about the landing, flat on his back. Yeah, Brazilians celebrate. Well, the second repechage contest features Exactly the same country matchup, Neil. The Netherlands and Brazil. Roy Meyer of the Netherlands faces David Moura of Brazil. It'll be Meyer in the white jadogi, Moura in blue. And the referee in the middle for this one is Orlando Cruz of the Dominican Republic. Yeah, another possibility of uh, two Brazilians this time on, on the rostrum. And uh, David Moura came up as a challenger to Silva. Silva, I always thought, well, Moura is he's got beautiful technique, and I thought, well, they're getting him ready for this Olympic berth, and, and Silva won't let it go. <laughs> he's, he's still in there with the chance, you know, and, and he thinks, even though he's 34 years of age, that he is going to go to that Olympic Games. This man here, is the new kid on the block and uh, Roy Meyer he just won't stop coming he'll be here for a fight he always spoils for a fight and that's exactly what he's going to give him well if Roy Meyer were to win a medal the 
dancing skills of Jorge Fonseca from Portugal that we saw <laughs> when he won the gold medal yesterday yeah. will, will be put in the background, I can he assure will. you. Here He's we go. a dancer is Roy, isn't he? Wow, that clicking noise that we just heard there. And we were talking about all the way through this uh, tournament, we have a microphone just above the uh, mat area. We can hear every, when they're puffing, uh, when every exchange with the grips and, uh, you know, the fingers, as you can see there, heavily bandaged up. And the reason is your fingers take a little bit of a mauling <laughs> out there on that jacket. <laughs> Two hands on normally initiates the uh, attack. And if you've got two that are loaded up, then both people can go in. And for, like for me, for example, I would always prefer to be dominating the grips. And that's why you see them snapping the grips off there. They snap it off, but one of the rules is they've got to attack. And look at that, tries for the turnover there, and he nearly put himself in trouble. In fact, he's still in trouble here. Roy Meyer trying to close the gap there, and there was a little bit of panic from David Mora. Took a bit of a bump to the head there. Neither of these two, with the greatest of respect to Meyer and Mura. Neither of these two are recognized as Nawaz are specialists. And there was an opportunity there for Mura to execute the turnover. He got the first part right, and then I, I was slightly embarrassed for him as it fell apart. And then there was an opportunity for Maya to take advantage of that slip for Mura, and that fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, the transition from standing to ground, I've seen it uh, so many times. It's it's been the most important part, of course, of the standing to groundwork situation that we have in judo. That's what differentiates it uh, from the jiu-jitsu. Now, Maya has to try and wrap up the head and then take his leg out. You need to hold them down, only the upper part of the body, and if your leg is trapped, then they won't count the seconds. If he gets it out, then it'll be a 20 second hold down that he'll need to hold him for. But as you can see there, Mura is holding on to that leg and it'll be squeezing the life out of it. <laughs> Those toes were going white. It's asking a lot and we have chatted about this uh, before. You know, the level of expertise in Niwaza can really set you apart from some of the others. And with the best will in the world, these, these two aren't, um, they're, not, they're not the experts down now. I'd stay standing up <laughs> if wow. I were Meyer and Mura. But you know, the, the thing is, is just have one specialist move that you move into, and if it doesn't work, then get up and throw again, you know, but both, Ooh, uh, both oh, throwers, yeah. that was close. Meyer's, that was a bit of a... Meyer's bit of a right there. Yep. He just grabbed the leg, didn't he? That uh, was you're so not, instinctive. Yeah, it, was, it just was. You're not allowed to reaction. touch below the belt line at all. With so the hand. any throws, yeah, th uh, any throws, yes, with the hand. Uh, and any throw that you do has got to be Ooh. initiated uh, above the belt line. There and you go. <laughs> well, this is groundwork now. Yeah. So uh, Maya trying for the arm lock That's here. And he's going to go That's into the hold. Up. Look at that. He's got the hold, and now. Mura, as this is his last attempt to try and get out of this. Urukatami now is what he's holding with mm -hmm. Roy Meyer. Can he hold it off? I think he can. It's going to be all over. He's got a Wazeri already. Uh, there's only 30 seconds on the clock left, but he doesn't need it because he's got the upon. Roy Meyer is going to be fighting for third place. And he did that in Niwaza. Now, mm -hmm. 
I was saying that, you know, I was suggesting that both of them should stay standing up. The other side of this is if, if they're not that great, either of them on the ground, maybe one of them will make a mistake. Yeah. Mura did. Well, he did. He almost made a couple, didn't he, all the way through the contest. He uh, almost got caught. And then Roy Meyer, credit to him. Thanks because, for that. Thanks yeah, for that. <laughs> he's, a, he's such a nice chap, though, yeah, Roy he's... Meyer. He really is. And uh, he, he smashed... Um, Murrah in, in the face by accident or on the head mm. and he apologised he said I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry and, and I really believe it's from the heart there he doesn't mean it there are two words that we use from time to time in English one is joker and one is clown and, and they mean you know, in, in this instance when we talk about Roy Meyer they, they mean completely different things he's not a clown he's a joker he likes a bit yeah, of a no, joke he and he likes a laugh and you know he's a big guy and big heart and Likes a lot of fun. Here's his chance now. Fight for a World Championship bronze medal. David Murrah missed out. Yeah, this is where it started. Look at that. He, he, so he brings yeah. Murrah yeah. up and then just goes on to the arm uh, to do a Harigatami and actually what happens is then Murrah panics a little bit turns inwards to avoid the arm lock and he just went straight into the hold down he actually put himself onto his back Roy Meyer that face there <laughs> just shows a little bit of determination <laughs> look at it so still one more to go Roy but uh, he'll be there and he'll be ready Whatever happens, always good quality and uh, good, uh, good for the amount of money he costs us, uh, Roy. Well, that's the repechage contest sorted out. We know who will be competing for the bronze medals. We come now to the first of the semi-finals in the plus 100 kilo category. Lukas Kopalik of the Czech Republic goes up against Kim Ming Jong of the Republic of Korea. It'll be Kopalik in the white judogi, Kim in blue, and the referee in the middle for this one is Velimati Kaninkanta of Finland. Ladies and gentlemen, the semi final, maybe more than 100 kilo. Today, that's Hakyoga Mutoku. Kim Min Jong has been a revelation actually today and actually from their one meeting before he was the winner over Kapelik. Remember Kapelik of Czech Republic, he was Olympic champion at the weight category below. He's wearing the gold patch but it's not for his heavyweight uh, competitions, it's for his light or it, his, it is for his heavyweight, not for the super heavyweights. And uh, it was minus 100 kilograms he was Olympic champion. This man here, just breaking through into the big time, and he's had a great run through. Lucas Kapelik, he is a groundwork specialist, and what we were talking about earlier, about don't go down to ground, well, neither one of those would have gone down to ground with uh, Lucas Kapelik, because he likes it down there. But well, I'm rather hoping that we're going to get uh, an ex you know, an example of that. I'm not against the idea of seeing Kapalik work on the ground, given what we've just seen in the previous <laughs> contest. Well, he has good transition down, and the thing is about good groundwork people is that every opportunity that he has from any of his throws or any of the throws from Kim Min Jong will be to get down to his uh, very, uh, it's very fundamental Newaza and he just, he hmm. turns them, he can strangle them, he can arm lock them, he can hold them down. But uh, the ways in are very simple. Yeah, I hadn't really stopped to, to look at it in, in that light. But you're perfectly right, Neil. You know, the lower the, the, the weights you go down, the more technical it seems to get. And they come from all sorts of angles. They do all, you know, maybe fancy sorts of things. 
They keep it simple in the heavyweight <laughs> division, don't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is the reason being that when they're defending, most defend on their on their front, which for good Nawaza people, for good groundwork people, is is, is an open yeah, invitation. Thanks very much. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go. Both both fighters are going to pick up penalties for passivity. These little yellow dots there signify a penalty. If you get the third one of those, then you're disqualified from the contest. No one wants to see that, but it can happen. Well, he's fighting clever as Kim. He knows that his, his, his big chance here is to create a little bit of space to get underneath for the Cianagi. And Krapelic is absolutely squashing it dead. But if they keep snapping off the grips and they're not positive with the grips, then they're going to get another penalty each. And then we've got a situation that one of them might be disqualified. Well, we've had a big crowd in all week, but now we've got almost capacity crowd. They're right the way up to the rafters. Look at this. Fundamental principles of double lapel turn. And Kim is not in the best place here, I tell you now. And uh, the referee is just going to allow him just to get that little bit of purchase on it. And it's not to be. Kim does well. And Kim's not finished here, so he's going to try and tie up Kapelik. Kapelik's mm. going to turn this, he will uh, plan his escape. I was going to say he'll turn onto his front at the right time, but uh, didn't need to do it. Or almost sold him, didn't he? You know, yeah. it, it, there are a, another group of Newaza experts who are not only good at executing things direct, but they're also good at turning things in their favor so situations that look as though they're it's about to go against them they're able to turn them into their own ad advantage and Lucas Kapalik is one of those Kim began to feel oh I might have him here and yeah. then he realized hang on he, he's just suckering me in <laughs> you know he just he wants me to do this well, I, I think as well uh, Kapalik uh, will know that he's got to hit Kim with the Newaza, with the groundwork exchange a little bit quicker because Kim managed to spread himself and spread his load and, and, and it was difficult to turn him yeah. uh, because yeah. he had good base. Exactly. So uh, I think he'll be faster in for the next exchange. Well, that time has gone. It's nearly four minutes. Four-minute contest for men and the women. And if there's no score on the board, those two Shidos will get carried over, the penalties. And it'll be golden score situation. And it looks like it's going to happen there. Both fighters pick up penalties. Three seconds left to go. We will have a period of golden score now. They're going to take one of them away, I think. No, both of them. So just going in then to golden score, they've both got two penalties apiece. And that means that the referees and also the panel here are not going to allow it to go too far without them attacking. They've got to attack. And I can hear everybody saying, well, what happens if they both don't attack? There we go. We have one, one attack there from Kim. Now it's up to Capellet. Now this is where he's got to be a bit faster. Watch this. He's just got to get some kind of leverage. And Kim is just holding off there. There's the flattening out yeah. that Neil was talking about. Kapalik had one go at it. That door was shut. <laughs> so he was to be, yeah, it's got to catch saying. him earlier. He has got to catch him earlier. 
I think it's going to come from a failed effort from Kim. Yeah, now, now we get uh, a situation, and, yeah. and that's how quick he's got to go in there, Kapalik. Yeah, it's going to be a failed attack from Kim that will give Kapalik the best chance of executing something down on the ground. That's if he doesn't do something standing up, or Kim doesn't come up with a score standing up. Wants to get out of that area. Maybe it was just, just enough there. I think so. They were very close to the edge there. They've got to stay within the blue area. And that was very close as far as penalties are concerned. <laughs> Coach is just being told to quieten down, not allowed to shout while they're actually fighting. They can do it in between. Oh, yeah. Kabelik! That was close. That was really close. Too much of a delay for that. Now then, he's got his chance. Yeah. Now, if he can tie up, watch this leg come up now. It's out, oh, it's out, it's out, out. he's got him. Kapalik's got him. That was his moment there. He had to wait for his moment. He gets into the final, Kapalik. Well, the thing that will be historic here, of course, he was world champion at the weight below. He's been world medalist at this heavier weight, but uh, he's now in the final and they've got a chance of being a, a champion of the world at two weights. When Lucas Kapalik decided to go up at the end of 2016, he knew that he had four years to recreate the kind of quality of judo that saw him become Olympic champion in 2016. It took about a year, year and a half for him to, to get there. It was two and a half years sooner than he thought. He thought that this is, this is where he would be. It was very, very quickly into it. And now this, this position, the final of the World Championships, a year away, a year away from the Olympic Games is proof positive that this was a great move. Well, great indicator. We saw him give Teddy Renair a real scare just a few weeks ago. And I think he's going to be really full of confidence coming out of these World Championships. I mean, it's going to be a great final. We know that. We don't know who he's going to have in it yet. Uh, obviously, Tushy's Villy is the number one. He's the current world champion, the defending world champion. Horasawa is also close to Rene. It's, it's all very close between them. So it should be a good old sorting out with this heavyweight division. And I think that Teddy Rene will be a little bit nervous. Now, this was the Cianaghi that starts it. And at last, he had his opportunity here. And he didn't have to turn him over. He just pushes him onto his back here. And he just climbs out of those legs there into Tachi Shiogatami. And while well, the Korean knew that it was all over. Well, whatever happens that with, with, with regard to this upcoming semi-final, we're going to have a final to savour. Lucas Kapalik is in there. So many people wanted to see that. It will either be, as Neil said, the current world champion, Guram Tusishvili. That will be good for us. Or it will be Harazawa Hisayoshi of Japan. That would be great for the crowd. Whichever way you look at it, we are going to have a great final on paper because it's then got to materialize but uh, you know uh, touches really I, I think i mean he's going to come out to this semi-final here and he's going to go for it on i think harasawa you know he's going to go for it as well because he's getting better and better again harasawa he went off the boil for a little while and i thought that he was always if you remember we always mm. wanted to see the Harasawa and Teddy Rene fight. And then when it happened, it was a bit of an anti-climax. And, uh, and uh, Rene just climbed all over him. But uh, I think he's got better and better now. Tushisvili is getting better and better as well. He's got a bit of a gap between himself and the rest. I think Harasawa here is going to try and give him a hard fight. It should be a great one. It'll be Tushisvili in the white jadogi, Harasawa in blue the referee in the middle for this one is Lubomir Peter of Australia
last day of individual competition here at the Nippon Budokan in Tokyo. And we still haven't come to the final yet, and already there's a real buzz in the arena. I have to say that the buzz is because Harazawa's just walked in here. But now we're going to get the defending world champion, Guram Tusishvili. This is the matchup that Harazawa would have liked to have had one round later. He's got it now, and his problem is even if he gets past Tusishvili, He's got Kapalik, the Olympic <laughs> champion, at the weight below waiting it's for him. It's just two matches, that's all. It's just two matches. Here we go. Get ready for fireworks, because that's what's going to happen here. Huge throw at Tushishvili. He's thrown for it on every single match so far. Sony Sonokamigoshi! Oh, and Harasawa there. Just a little bit of a panic. We, we were talking about the matchup with Ortiz and uh, uh, Sue Ellen Altherman, 16 and 0. The matchup, as far as Harazawa and Dusishvili, this is the first time they've gone head to head, but he's got a good record against Georgians. Six, he's won, but he, lo he lost the last one against Gela Zalashvili. I wonder if that will be in his mind. I'll tell you whose mind it will be in. Tusishvili's. Well, Tusishvili, I mean, don't forget that the, the Georgians um, have the junior world champion and senior world champions. So this is the senior world champion. The junior world champion has already beaten him. He's already beaten him, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Single Shido picked up by Harazawa. We've had a minute. Nicely balanced here. He hasn't done anything yet, Harazawa. He hasn't been able to. Tushishvili just exploding into the techniques. Oh, almost up onto his hip. Oh, oh with the look sasai. at that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Sasai there, out of trouble from Tushishvili. Crowd loving this. Now it's going to happen. And again, he attacks with that Sasai to get out of trouble there. And Harasawa, every time he comes over with that thundering right hand of his, because he wants the sleeve and he wants that hand on, the right hand on. And every time he does it, Tushisvili will take the hand off, but he's also wanting to attack off it as well. Now watch this. Tushisvili catches the uh, sleeve. Something's going to happen here. Tries the Tanio toss this time, change of direction. A little bit untidy, but Tusis really is not going to worry about that. He didn't get caught. That was, that was his main, main concern. Let me get out of there. I better try the Tanio Toshi, and at least he had a go at it. Arazawa flirting with a passivity penalty. Really got to be first. Can't just react to the attacks of Tushishvili. He's holding his same side there. Kosoto there from Ah oh, Tushishvili. <laughs> Almost catches him with the Kosoto there. They were hooked up. And Harasawa is going, oh, <laughs> I was so close to going over there. But uh, I don't know whether he thought that he was managing to turn that. But it was Tushishvili, I think, there that was locked up. Well, there was, there was a second when there was a, a, a slight change in direction, but most of it was Dusis really on the attack with that Koso Dagaki. Talk about change of direction. Wow. These two are changing direction. Somebody's going to go for a score. Now then, Tushisvili, Kosoto this time. Oh, he's got yes, over. He's got him. Okay. Horisawa no. scores it upon. I thought maybe it was a Wazari there, but he's holding him down. Tushisvili is not going anywhere then, from there. Case, it's not Horasawa's going anywhere. finished this. Yep, yep. And the Japanese are going absolutely crazy because that is a huge upset.
Well, I mean, he threw caution to the wind there, didn't he, Tushisvili? He went for the hip on and he's just paid the price. Wow, credit to Harasawa because Harasawa, he just fought that absolutely beautifully. He wasn't going to let go of that hold down either, was he? Yeah. Well, actually, he did the right thing because I think that was borderline hit button for me. Looked as though he went down onto his side. We haven't seen the replay, however. No, we so, haven't. You know, let's leave it for the replay because it could it could be something that we were saying, you know, early on. If it if it can be upon, then let's leave it. So we'll we'll leave it there. And the other thing is that he was really directly into the Osai Komi. Directly, what? and he wasn't going to let it go. No. And uh, just to explain uh, to the people out there, uh, and we'll try and explain it as we go through it. But what happens is. If they call Ippon and everybody gets up and there was an opportunity for groundwork, here's the first move. Let's have a look at it. Let's talk our way through it. Then the Ko Soto there from Tushisvili. Tushisvili gets taken over. Now that could have been a Wazari for sure. Now if uh, the referee calls an Ippon straight away, so look how he lands. And I think it was a Wazari. But I mean, the referee calls Ippon. But uh, certainly, Harasawa, he just follows it down. He thinks, I'm not letting go of this. He climbs out from the, those legs there and holds Tushisvili down. This and he is, wasn't going to let better, it go. Slightly better angle. Right, see, we're seeing it in slow motion as well. Well, I, I still think, you know, I, I, yeah. I still think it started on the side, worked its way over. It rolled and, uh, you know, it's normally three parts of the back hitting the floor. And, uh, well, anyway, no matter what, Harasawa went down. He actually uh, secures the hold down there. He wasn't going to let it go. And Tishisvili loses this uh, very important match. Whether it was Wazari or Ippon is, is later on going to come out to, to be recognised as a moot point because what happened was as soon as the technique was, was over, irrespective of whether it was Rosario or Ippon, Harasawa was immediately into the Osai Komi, and whether it was Rosario or not, he wasn't getting out of that. No way he was getting out of it. So mercifully, that one worked out. <laughs> right, we come to the medal matches, and the first of the medal matches is the first of the bronze medal contest in the plus 78 kilo category. Beatrice Souza of Brazil faces Kyra Sayat of Turkey. It'll be Souza in the white Jadogi Sayat in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Arto Afando of Belarus. Two Brazilians fighting for third place. Souza, who will be coming out here. Will she come out first? No, she won't. Say it will come out first. Kaira Say it of Turkey, formerly of France, as I understand it. Yes, indeed. Now representing Turkey. And Say it leads them out. Beatrice Souza of Brazil, the first of the Brazilians to step out. Of course, Maria Altherman is in the other bronze medal match against Sarah Asahina. medal matches now. Well, that didn't look like a very good fall there from Souza. And I'm not quite sure whether she went onto an arm, but uh, something, something wasn't quite right there with the landing.
Yeah, she landed very, very uh, heavily face down. We're gonna have, we're gonna see when she stands up what part of the body she holds onto. Is it knee? I think so. I think something went uh, knee-wise. Uh, I think she's probably going to find it very difficult to carry on in this match. Um, you know, the thing is as well with our sport, it, it's all about rotation. And as soon as she starts to move in a... Well, looks like she's going to go on it. Pulled herself back together. You can't expect Kara Sayat to sit back and say, well, let me give you a couple of seconds to <laughs> recover. She said, look, I'm out here to do what I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was no hands there. There's got to be a, a, a Shido there for Salza because uh, absolutely no hands for that technique. You've got to have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go, the penalty. Yeah, yeah, you've got to have control with the hands. You can't just fall flat on your face. Oh, we need to get off that grip. It's quite on, on, on that one side for a while. However, she put in three little as she was her attacks, one after the other, so I suppose that was just as well then. Yeah. She wasn't, she wasn't just holding on there and doing nothing. There were three attacks. So maybe just leave that exchange. Again, slow to get to her feet, Petra Souza. Remember, it is a fight for a bronze medal at the World Championships. And uh, we've seen this before. It's, it's a difficult decision to have to make. How uh, you're kind of half hoping for a miracle in, in some ways. You know, maybe I can just catch them to win the bronze. We have seen it happen. Wasn't far off. Best attack of the contest for Souza so far. Just threatening Kaira Sayat towards that Osodakari area going to the rear. I'll say it like you said just taking no prisoners here just going in no matter what no, she's threatened again with the Osodagari he hasn't come up with a score as yet now it's said who picks up the penalty for passivity yeah, well, I can't really understand it. Say it. If I was say it's coach, I'd be saying, you know, you just need to go forward here, pile on the pressure. Mm. She's taking her chances here, Souza. Well, she's definitely the one who is putting in most of the attacks now. Maybe you can see that she's, right, yeah. yeah, she's distressed, you know, she is distressed. Like you said, she's given it everything and maybe that last exchange there was just that bit too much for her. She gets to her feet, you know, she gathers herself and then has another go, but... Well, there has to be duty of care at some stage, you know, from, from the coach, I think, but... say it just uh, throwing caution to the wind here and no that's it now 
Well, that's yeah, it. That, yeah. That'll score, and, and it's going to be all tap over out. now. Yeah, tap out. So, Souza. Mm. See, it's always really difficult for the fighter who has just thrown, because what she's supposed to do, she doesn't want to come up with the technique, but you're not going to win unless you do what you're supposed to. No. And as you were just saying, there's a duty of care from, from a coach there. And maybe, you know, you could have said it's not worth it. That the, the athlete at the end decides, you know, I want to stay on. But obviously she stayed on one cycle too much or too many. She can hardly what And yeah. what an appreciative crowd. You know, yeah. the crowd here all appreciate the fact that she really wanted to give it a go. And, such a shame. Say it doesn't want to leave the mat because, you know, it's an opponent, but it's also a colleague. You know, they, they, they train together and they see each other around. And, you know, you never want to win that way. Irakli Usnadze has a look over his shoulder. And I think you'll find that, well, I mean, we're not going to see it. because Again, you know, she's looking over her shoulder. She's going to wait for... Sousa when they come off. Yeah, that's, you know, there's no jumping around and celebrating and she'll wait for her to come, to come off and make sure she's okay. Super stuff from both fighters uh, and really good sportsmanship here. She's walking in front of the crowd with help, of course, but she gets such an ovation. And right to the end, Kyra has wait, waited to go out with Beatrice Souza. medal for Kyra Sayat of Turkey. We've got a second bronze medal contest coming up next. Asahina Sara of Japan faces Maria Suellen Alderman of Brazil. It'll be Asahina in the white Jadogi, Altherman in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Raul Camacho of Spain. She hasn't quite looked on the kind of form that won the world title last year, Sarah Asahina. Looked better in her repercharge match, her final repercharge match, because at last she was getting all her ashy was her and things going together. Altamont, always there and roundabout. Always up here fighting for medals. Second chance then for the Brazilians to get a medal. So disappointed that they couldn't get or continue the other match. This lady here. Well, she, well, sorry, she's just been introduced as the reigning, uh, reigning world champion. I'm just thinking, make the most of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it won't happen next time you step out onto the tatami. No, she'll have to wait till next year. And yeah. Well, the well, year, year after. after. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, Neil. There'll be no world championships next year because we've got the, the Olympics. Olympic Games. Yeah. So here we go. Sarah Asahina of Japan. Massive Sasai Surikomiyashi there on Altherman. It's her go-to technique. 
And then she comes across from Maki Komi. Both throws over both flanks. Ultimate absolutely left hand left hand fighter. She'll just be plugging away over that left side. Three nil to Asahina in their head to heads. And I think if Asahina gets the timing right, she won't mind that at all either for the Ashiwaza or with that side really exposed to her, the Tani Otoshi which we've seen her try and execute earlier on. You can't give it to a, to a fighter of that kind of quality. Just offer up that one side. Oh, Didn't have the second hand yeah. on it. Actually, she needed the sleeve. She got the sleeve and went in, but she didn't have really good control of the sleeve. Just as well she didn't hang on to that sleeve for too long and go down with any weight. Seen that happen a couple of times during these championships. Well, it's all Asahina at the moment, and Ultimum hasn't even started. Now something's going to happen. I think that's her best chance there, Ultimum. Absolutely. She was coming in there to get the contact to, to do the Kosoto. And Sarah Asahina had a little wobble. Oh, now then, Oguruma. Well, Ashiguruma. No sleeve again. She likes to go off the double lapel, Asahina, but uh, often doesn't control that sleeve. And she does it, I know why she does it. She does it so that she's got the sasai and then she's got the opposite one, but she'd be well that when she goes across for the Ashiguruma that she just catches the sleeve on the way over. I'll send a memo to the coach. <laughs> <laughs> now she's got it, here we go. Uchimata. Okay. Alphaman picked up a penalty there. Minute 23 left to go. We're still waiting for the first score. Now she goes in again, and again Altham lands on her face. Well, I don't think we've seen Ultima, other than that Ko Soto there that she tried to get close to Asahina with. We haven't really seen her initiate. It's going to have to be a second one in a minute to Ultima. It's going to be the Ashiguruma again, any second now from Asahina. Yes. Sasai first. <laughs> Well, now it's time. Uh, that's yeah. going to be a score. It's all over. Okay. Five seconds to go there. And she scores an ip on Asahina. And it was always going to happen, wasn't it? I mean, Altherman did nothing.
Yeah, she was consumed with the thought of keeping Asahina out of so many times when her arms were stiff and she was just pushing away to battling for the a, a grip and then you know you just saw her hands pushing her away there was nothing coming from her unfortunately bronze medal for Asahina Sara of Japan. She, that's a save for her. She had to be on that podium because Sonne is in the final. So this is, this is the, the minimum. This was the minimum that was required of her. And now her biggest rival is ahead of her. She really is. And with a chance, I think, of becoming world champion as well Sonny Akira next up but uh, she has well a lot of work to go because uh, Adelis Ortiz will be her opponent Sarah well Asahina Sarah just crying there and the reason she's crying is because she wanted more yeah, we've spoken about this over the last few days with regard to how important is a bronze medal for some fighters. You know, you see some fighters coming out, they're cheering, they're screaming, they're punching the air. It means absolutely everything. And for poor Sarah, she realizes that she's about to leave the competition uh, area as the world champion for the last time this time round you know she may come back in, in two years time and win another world title but she leaves here the red bag patch is going to go to someone else and it's going to go to someone in the upcoming contest it's either going to go to Sonne for the first time or Ortiz for the third time but one thing we know is even this you know technique here this nice finish she comes up with a big hip on at the end that was it for her but turn I, I, at the I world think Champions. really it's the Olympic birth that, that, that that's what the tears were about. You know, the Olympics is drifting away from her. I think Sonny, if she wins this, it will uh, definitely be an Olympic selection. Well, we'll see. Final still to come. Well, that was more Okaruma, wasn't it, than Ashi? Just a little bit higher with the leg. Well, unless they've told her, you know, only a gold medal will do there's still 12 months to go <laughs> we come now to the final of the plus 78 kilo category Idales Ortiz of Cuba faces Sonny Akira of Japan will be Ortiz in the white Jirogi Sonny in blue the referee in the middle for this one is Mariano dos Santos of Brazil well that's interesting they have one each then on their head-to-heads which when you consider that um, Sonny Akira is just a youngster really coming through and so Adilis or uh, is, it, well she obviously she's a, a, a serious, um, she's a campaigner, she's been here before, she's been in major Olympic and world finals for many many years so she's very experienced. And now he's the finalists. A seasoned campaigner was the word I was looking for. It's funny, isn't it, that someone could come in to the arena as the former Olympic champion, double world champion, and had so much success, and still recently, and still not be fancied 
You know, Sonny, to be honest, from this morning, we were talking about her as the possible gold medalist, and here she is in the final. So I think it's even harder to go against her than it was this morning. Well, I think that it's going to be difficult for Ortiz to do any kind of drops. And you can see that uh, there's difference in height here. And I think that Sonny will be just pushing across with her tire toshi. Anyway, let's see. Final then of the plus 78s. The f well, there are a couple of things that Ortiz has got in her favour. I suppose the, the biggest one is been there, done it. And I'm really talking about experience. She has, she's the most experienced heavyweight, super heavyweight in the division. There's nobody there in the world of, of super heavyweight women judo that's got as much experience as Ortiz has. No, it's true. Got to use that. Straight away we see there's a fight for the inside grip here because that's exactly what Sonny wants. So Sonny wants the inside grip so she can control it. She wants to stop that. I think that will be the strongest one from Ortez. And then when she gets the inside grip, then she'll come across for that tire toshi. I'm on about Sonny attacking Ortiz. Always that fight for the inside grip. And there she goes. She goes across with it. As soon as she gets the grip she wants, Sonny, straight away across. Watch the elbow, look, ducking in there, right into the central point. Sonny goes over the top, then just tucks that elbow in. As soon as she tucks the elbow in, she's ready to go. Ortiz, though. Hasn't read the script. She just trying that Cianaghi all the time. Now she's ready. This is what she wants. Two hands on here. And she's just backing Ortez out. Look for the action reaction. <laughs> just dominating, dominating the inside grip. Ortez doesn't quite know what to do with her. So both of them get Shido, they, they've got to grip up. Basically, that's what he's saying. Just grip up, get on with it. Well, that's certainly a, a different approach there from Ortiz, just sending that left arm over the top. Because she certainly couldn't uh, carry on doing what she was doing because she was going to lose it otherwise. Ooh, second penalty up there for Sonne. Ducked underneath, and that's... Yeah, I was going to say, do the same again. <laughs> this time she pulls it off. That was a kind of a borderline one. Were we not in the same position with Maria Suelen Altherman earlier on? 
you know, and there was a bit of a duck in underneath. And, you know, we were talking about Ortiz just being that little bit too clever because she'd been around the block, and then she came up with the throw to finish it. There's the, uh, well, mm. see it, Toshi, isn't it? Yeah. There, she just keeps poking it across there. As soon as she gets the grip she wants. Well, I'd hate for this uh, to end in three shidos because Sonny definitely trying to throw here. This certainly would be a well-received gold medal for the Japanese. Oh, Chigari this time. And Ortiz now has got to start something. And that was just a flop, wasn't it? Threw herself onto her back. Possibility that she might get Shido for pulling down. Is she going to get away with it? She does. And again, the arm goes down. That elbow goes down. Now she's going to do it. Oh, Uchi. Tayatoshi. And now, Ultherman, uh, sorry, Ortiz, who hasn't done anything for a little while, should get penalized with a second Shido. And there she does. She gets the second Shido. So now the work rate is the key to this match. Now that's better stuff. Everybody out there. Big cheer. Pushing forwards now, Sonny. And again, another Ochigari. Referee doing the right thing, let this carry on a bit. And now Ashi was up, here we go. Has the sleeves, gonna poke it, po just put it across again. And it's uh, definitely Ortiz here that's just on the retreat. She doesn't want to hook up. Sonny coming forwards. Has the sleeve, oh, oh no. now then, that might be it. It might be it. Is she going to get away with it? She does. That's the last one, though. I think that will be the last one. I think now, if I was Sonny, I'd be just thinking about coming forwards. Even if it was to instigate another one of those. Because Ortiz is desperate to attack. She hasn't been able to get two hands on. And now Sonny comes forward again. And no rotation with that. Absolutely no rotation whatsoever. And Sonny knows that she has the beating of her. It's the last roll of the dice. It really is. There was no rotation on that seal Aggie there. It just fell to the floor. Oh, and and there was nothing in that either. Yeah. She might have yeah. thrown it away on that. And I just don't understand that. 
She's the one dominating. He has to let this carry on. Yeah. She didn't need to do that. She just needs to keep two hands on. Now she has two hands on. We need an attack. Tayatoshi again. I think that's it. That might be it. So, so close now. Referee has a look at his two judges here because they better be unanimous with this. It's carrying on. Two champions and they're letting them fight this out. They need it to be a little bit more positive. Remember that the winner of this is going to be world champion. Oh, no, that's it. That's going to be it. Ortiz just can't attack. I think it's going to be the third Shido. It is. Ortiz gets it. She knew, absolutely knew. Sonny was piling the pressure on, and I think that she fully deserved that. She really piled the pressure on. She was the only one uh, that was coming forwards in the end, and Ortiz accepts. Well, if Asahina had a mountain to climb, <laughs> that mountain has just grown with that win by Sonny Akira. It's worth mentioning because we had spoken about it in a, in a previous contest. Here she is now taking the gold medal from the former Olympic champion, double world champion, and probably, you know, you know, had she had she won there, Ortiz, people would have would have been saying, "Okay, she's in the driving seat." All of that, all of that now is out of the window. You've you've got a, a new world champion here. She's from Japan. It's going to be almost impossible to take it away from her now. Neil said that in in the lead up, but before that fight, there was still a chance. Like Neil said earlier, I don't think there's any chance now. Sonny, it is, who is the number one. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think that Sonny did enough. She had mm. to win this. And uh, I think that the pressure has been on all the Japanese team to win here. And, you know, and that's a lot of pressure, isn't it? I mean, most of us, if people put us under pressure to win a medal anywhere else in the rest of the world, then you'd think that's a tall order. Here, the, the tall order is for them to win it, to win the event. Yeah. <laughs> And in a, in a, I know I keep going on about Asahina, but we are talking about the, the plus 78 kilo category and we're in Japan, so it's kind of topical. In, in as much as Asahina's still got a year to try to pull things back, the, the distance that she's got to come now because she you know, fell behind so much with Sonny taking this gold medal is, is made even more difficult because Sonny has got a year to get further ahead. That's really the big problem. She's not going to go backwards here, Sonny. She's young. She's improving. I think she's on the way up. She's going to get better and better. I don't think there's any way that she can close the gap now. Asahina. Sorry. Well, we come to the first of the bronze medal contest in the plus 100 kilo category. Rafael Silva of Brazil faces Kim Min Jong of the Republic of Korea. It's silver in the white jadogi, Kim in blue. Referee in the middle for this one is Roberto Chiolio of Italy. Three contests to go to close out the seventh day of competition here at the Nippon Budokan, the World Judo Championships, and we'll then have tomorrow for the team event, but it's gone so quickly, really. Seven days 
of competition. 14 weight categories. This is the last of the weight cut categories, the super heavyweights. And this is the first of the bronze medal contests. Kim Min Yong ready to go. He's, uh, he's all set. Takes the walk out. He just wants to get on with it. Rafael Silva. Nice upon in his repechage final against Hank Grohl. straight away there just looking for the grip backing Rafael Silva up trying to create that little bit of space ready for the sea and Aggie well again uh, Rafael Silva just decides to stick that Ouchi Uchimata in and crowd were already with him. Ooing and ahhing. Yes, they were. <laughs> oh, well, both of them going for it. And Aggie, time and time again here. Just Korean style, isn't it? Yeah, Just it is, piling absolutely. up the attacks. He's, Just been, he's been watching Cho Guam. <laughs> well, you know, it's the same one, isn't it? It's the same Sea and Aggie, whether it's heavyweight or, or you know, or lighter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kim Kim Won Jin would have done exactly the same thing. Kim Lim Won did as well. Ooh. Hard to hold off a man of that size, but. Kim has managed it this time round. Silver, as Neil said, when he throws, he throws beautifully. It's to try and get him moving. It's like a huge ship that needs to be turned round. It takes a long time. And then once it gets underway and you get a rate of knots up, off you go. Rafael Silva just trying to wait his time here to go in. When he does go in, he really, like Sheldon said, puts all his weight behind it. Difficult. There he is again. But look at the gripping there by Kim. So typical of the Koreans. They're just able to snap your grip off no matter how big you are. Oh, he <laughs> decides to change it here to the other side. So I, I think that's OK. He's, he's made a good effort, but he's hit a brick wall. <laughs> it's not Kim's fault that when, when he gets in there, for a, reason, for a reasonable attack, he gets all the you know rotation that we talk about. He's in nice and close. He obviously wants to try and throw him, but he's like, <laughs> not going anywhere. Wait, no, he just wasn't going anywhere, was he, Rafael Silva? I'm glad they didn't call that as a false attack. 
failed attack, yes, but it wasn't false. So great, uh, great lineup for the heavyweight division, really mm. is. It was very good. We got to see all of the top five in the final block as well. Yeah, that's a better one as well. Just moved him a little bit. Last time it was the brick wall. This time, maybe, you know, like the Pink a, Floyd a song. A moving brick wall. Well, this one, a, a brick <laughs> fell out of the wall, didn't it? <laughs> Bricks are beginning to, to <laughs> fall here. <laughs> We're going to have to find a new, an, another analogy. Yeah. Well, he's got the inside grip here. We, we saw it in the previous match here. Fight for the inside grip. But that Cianaghi hasn't uh, proved too successful. He's been in there a couple of times. Golden Ooh. score. Any score now on the board will win this. Three penalties against will also win it. He just looks more aggressive than Silva. Kim, maybe not as threatening, but he's keeping up a reasonable tempo, isn't he? Well, and also Silva's just attacking at the right time. Here he goes again. And now is he going to change Get it? Get off Uchimata. that. Uchimata. There's your chance. <laughs> just no, no, didn't enter either of their heads, did it? To, to go attack in for on ground the ground. One. No, no, sure. <laughs> it didn't. And, well, like I say, he just chooses his time carefully, Rafael Silva. You know, you, you would think that a man of Silva's size, if he attacks you on the ground, has got a pretty good chance. There's just so much weight, isn't there? I mean, he wasn't interested. Well, the heavyweights uh, that have a lot of success like um, Yoshihiro Yamashita, one of the greatest there. He just had one or two things he could do on the ground, but he did them very, yeah. very well. So uh, it was his go-to thing when he was in trouble. Ochi Gary this time. That was a change of direction from Kim. I think that that's his, uh, that's his direction, not the Sea and Aggie. Well, again, he's uh, right the way between his legs. It's good effort, really is a good effort. Draining. Up to this point, really, see the perspiration just dropping from their bodies and Kim struggling to get to his feet here. The referee just asking him to return to the start point and well, he gets a, ha a, a good hand from the crowd. And they're back underway. We've had a minute and 40 odd seconds of golden score. Penalty free as well, Neil. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I was saying it. He just does it at the right time. Here it is. Wow. And it's a good effort, wasn't it? It really was. Silva just about to get penalized and then he does another good attack. And I tell you now, I quite fancy him over, well, I don't really fancy him, but I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> I fancy his chances here over Kim because he's the one that actually, once he starts to attack, and he, he looks better, you know, he looks to me as if he's in slightly better condition here. Yeah, Kim looks particularly drained. Oh, speculative on the left side there. And again, that brick wall seems to be intact because he just hit it again. And I just throw it in any second now. He's, he knows that are just exactly on the time limit. Oh, oh, and he took him back. 
Changed the direction there. Kim changed the direction. Oh, Gary. I mean, he plugged away, didn't he, to the front there. And, well, Silva half committed. Only half, not even that. And Kim punishes him. Disappointment yesterday when Winner, Cho Guam didn't make it onto the medal podium, but Kim does today. Good performance from Kim. He had some good hip on throws all the way through the day. And he is really happy with that medal. And he gets a little pat on the back there. <laughs> Doesn't he from coach there? Just said, yes, that's what I expected. That was hard fought against the towering giant of a man, Rafael Silva, eventually at, brought down. Look at the change of direction there. He tried to counter, didn't he, Rafael Silva? Just suddenly thought, I'll, I'll give it a little go here with the counter. And a beautiful change of direction. Started off for Tayatoshi, but then changes direction for the Ouchi. Flat on his back, Rafael Silva. Our worst shot is followed well, by our best. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that was the attempt at the counter there. That and last the shot from the top camera there, looking down. A completely flattened Rafael Silva is always the worst, isn't it? Yeah. Luckily, we had the, the save with the um, beauty camera at the end. We come now to the second of the bronze medal contest in the plus 100 kilo category. Roy Meyer of the Netherlands faces Guram Tusishvili of Georgia. It'll be Meyer in the white judogi, Tusishvili in blue and the referee in the middle for this one. It is Turbat Ensetik of Mongolia. A small note here. Not one, not one of the men attempting to retain their world titles has been able to do it, not one. Except Ono. Ono wasn't the world champion. He lost, um, it was Hashimoto, wasn't it? Who, of course who, who it was. Who beat yeah. uh, yeah. An Chang Rim. So An Chang Rim wasn't here. Ono came in here having won the uh, previously. But An Chang Rim was the uh, defending world champion. He wasn't here. Hashimoto wasn't here. So An kind of had it, you know, I, I mean, Ono had it kind of free. It wasn't one, not one of them. Well, it'll be interesting now to see what Tushishvili is made of because he, he's going to have to dig in here. And I tell you, Roy Meyer can sniff a medal. <laughs> he can. He just, uh, a world medal. And you can see the determination on his face. And if Tushishvili doesn't shake this off, this horrible feeling of I'm not world champion anymore, then he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, I think he could take the, the single slip you know, and still f um, be on the medal podium and feel okay about it. Yeah, I think you're right. Drops in Aggie straight away there from Maya. And we come back to that, that um, thinking. Who is okay with the bronze? Well, that's exactly it. I mean, he came out there. Oh, Ooh. look at that. It's going to be a score. Was Harry scored there? Ooh. He goes across his backside. He doesn't put his hands down at all. Now, uh, they, they might have a little look at that he, he just to see where the landing is. Yeah, he doesn't put his hands down. Now, the, the, the thinking normally is at that point, you put your hands down and both hands will go down. Yeah, but only two hands together. It, th th this is most of the back. That oh, was the side. side. That was, the that's side the touched. scoring part. Yes. Side, that's the scoring part, not the backside yes. business. Yeah. So now he's got it all to do, hasn't he? Touches Villy. Well done, Roy Meyer. Gets on the board. Plenty of time, however. 
Well, definitely a different mindset uh, that just came out there. You know, Tushisville, you could see the disappointment on his face. Got to not lift gonna himself. Get the, yeah, well, I, I, I'm not going to get the big one, you know, so I, am I, you know, do I really want this? No, I don't, but you've got to go for it. Have you have to. to. And this is what shows great champions. Yeah, dig deep, make sure you're on that podium. Well, Roy Meyer will be looking at that clock there thinking two and a half minutes of hell. <laughs> I've got to keep the Georgian off for another two well, and a half minutes. You know what, that two and a half minutes there looks like two and a half hours. And you have another look at the clock and it's 2.21. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like you've been fighting for 10 minutes. Best thing is just to ignore it, forget it, and start again. And again, Meyer goes in, and he's totally off balance, Tushisvili, totally. Half the contest still to come. <laughs> Half the contest still to come, and I don't think that we've seen all the scores. We, uh, we're going to see other scores. There's it. Sony Surakamigoshi, this time by Tushisvili. And I think Maya would have done anything to avoid that. Well, let's just have a look, see if he can start this off. He's not going to be allowed too much time down there without it being absolutely positive. Things looking better as, as far as the clock is concerned. Minute and a half, and Maya is penalty free. Ooh, that was that close, was wasn't close. it? It was really close. Remember as well that Roy Maya has lost his last three outings with Tushisvili. So this is a great turnaround. What a time to do it. Absolutely. He's really stepping up, not just today, but in this particular contest as well against the current world champion for the next minute. <laughs> yeah, he needs to get out of there. I think he might just get yeah. a Shido here. He might get penalized for just dropping. Just bailed out of that action, didn't he? Things got a little bit too hot and went to ground. Another good effort from Fantastic Maya. effort, yeah. really good effort. Yeah, it really is. Full rotation. It's a shame that he picked up that penalty before the minute mark. That's the way that I look at things. And you can count down in the last few seconds, the last minute. Oh, another another good effort. Yeah, right the way in there. And Tushishvili doesn't know what to do with it. He really doesn't. He's under pressure. And he's not performing. The penalties aren't going to do anything for Tusishvili. He's not worried about it. What he's got to do is to step up his attacks here. And Maya is on the retreat. And that means he's in danger of getting another Shido. He needs to go in again. There he goes. And he broke his balance. He, he had the hands on. 29 seconds. This will be the longest 29 seconds of Roy Maya's life. He's going here now, Tusishvili. Tushisvili gets yeah, a penalty. Yeah, not surprised, but he won't have to worry. I mean, he's waiting for the right moment to attack, but he's running out of time. I don't think it's going to come here. And Roy Meyer goes again. <laughs> Cursing himself there was Tushisvili because he knows that Meyer got the timing perfect for that attack. Yeah. Here it is, the last 17 one. 17 seconds. Oh, tries for the Sienagi himself. Just has a little look at the clock there, Roy Meyer. He'll get a penalty for that. All right, six seconds left on the clock, and now he just needs to block out, and he will win a bronze medal here. He can burn another Shido. He has Neil. burnt it. He's already oh, he's burnt already. it. Okay. So um, yeah, he gave it. it away there. Yeah. Six seconds to go. He needs to stand his ground and uh, just block out. He cannot ste step out. That's it now. 
Roy Meyer's done it. And the world champion from last year not only loses out in the semi-final, but he was definitely off kilter the whole of that match. And I think off kilter is the best way to explain that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Winner at bronze medalist for Red Or, 100 kilograms in white jubilee, representing the Netherlands, Sosa Siro Wolanda. Well, I appreciate that. Touch his yeah, so do I. I watched him every himself. way to see how he was going to take that. And you know what he did? He took that he took like it. a man. A, a, a yeah. champion. <laughs> yeah, like a champion. He, yes. First of all, he took it like a man. <laughs> because that was a slap yeah. in, you know? You know, still holding it together. Because we know sometimes he can be an angry young man. But he took it like a man. He also took it like a champion, accepted the fact that he'd been defeated. And he'd, he'd lost that. Yeah. Oh, well, when he walked out, I could see, you know, that on his face, I mean, Roy Meyer's face was totally different. Wow, they've had a good tournament, they're Dutch, they really have. Yeah. Ended in a medal as well, they've got three men's medals. Roy Terrific. Meyer fought that cleverly. I've seen, you know, more attractive contests than that. It wasn't pretty, was Because it? it was not pretty. But what he did was score, hold on to the score, and, and work it well that it wasn't. You know, all right, he picked up the two penalties at the end. We could see those come in. We could see those come in. And he picked up the penalties at the right time. But remember, he went into the last minute. He was he, only towards the last minute did he pick up the first penalty. He, he did the right thing. Yeah, he did. Tayatoshi, look at that. Yeah. Tayatoshi took him there's, over. There's the score. Yeah, he yeah. landed on his side. Doesn't matter which side it is. The power of Roy Mart. And he just, uh, he just powered him over. And I've got to say another thing. Roy Meyer showed today that he's got more than four minutes in him. Yeah, I know. He had good condition right the way through there, didn't he? Just pushed it all the way through. I, you know, there have been times when I've accused him of being, you know, a bit of a gym bunny and, you know, not having... You know, but he showed some, some tactical awareness today. On two occasions, I really thought, hey, you know, you've, you've stepped up. Wait, Cred wait. Credit to you, Roy Meyer. Roy Meyer really stepped up to the game there, and that was an amazing performance. Another little jig, and uh, I'm sure that won't go viral. I'm sure it will. <laughs> I missed the jig, you know. Well, this is uh, definitely that oh, one's right. going okay. viral. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, luckily, all of this is done post bow, so all, all the formalities have taken place, and then comes the action. Well, we come to the final of the plus 100 kilo category. Harazawa Hisayoshi of Japan faces Lucas Kapalik of the Czech Republic. It's Harazawa in the white jodogi, Kapalik in blue. The referee in the middle for this one is Vladimir Nutsubidze of Georgia. And here with commentary on this final, the final individual match of these world championships, former world champion himself, Neil Adams. Well, I think this is going to be an absolute cracker because, you know, these two haven't fought each other. So it, this is a, a, a new matchup as well. It's an absolute new matchup. Vladimir Nutsubidze, the referee. He gets the nod. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Lukas Kapelik, Olympic champion in the weight below. World champion in the weight below. And now a chance of becoming a world champion in the super heavyweight division. Arasawa, his Yoshi comes out. What a semi final he had. I've got to say that uh, he's going to be a difficult man to beat here in front of this home crowd because he's definitely fighting above himself here. The Olympic champion at under 100 kilos against the Olympic silver medalist at this weight from Rio. Both these players were 
on the podium in Rio. One of them took the gold in the weight below. One of them took the silver in, the, in this weight. And now they go head to head here in Tokyo. Yes, it, and, and always nice, isn't it? When, when it's a, a head to head, people haven't seen this uh, matchup before. And I don't know why, because we, we have the uh, IJF circuit and uh, the world circuit puts a lot of them together all the time. And I wouldn't be surprised if Kapelik, his main aim is to take Halasawa to the mat as fast as he possibly can. This matchup is interesting because they haven't fought in competition before, but they fought plenty in training because Kapalik is trains at Nihon University. And so does Harazawa. He's, he's, that's his university. He's a graduate from there. There you go. First matchup with competition rules then. <laughs> <laughs> And that does make a difference. Randori and competition, two different things. He looks a little bit hesitant to, mm. to grip up with two hands, does Kapelik. Just dominating that head there. Uh, that's going to be a penalty straight away for Kapelik. And that's going to take him to two Shidos. That dominant grip there from Harasawa. That is the key here, I think. Unless he makes a mistake and goes to ground. Because he has an Uchi Mata as well, Harasawa. He's the best. This is the best I've seen him. The most dominant that I've seen him. And you can see by the look on his face here, just the body language gives it away. He's very, very confident here. <laughs> trying to push forward, Capellic trying to get some kind of reaction. So Halasawa is going to get Shido now for blocking out. Two Shidos apiece. Final of the World Championships. Might as well throw caution to the wind. Let's have a go. Well, it's right against left. That sleeve is not presenting itself. Just backing him up, Kapelik. That's not the go-to technique if you've got two Shidos on the board. Anything where you drop on your back, not the thing to do, especially if they stop you dead. Because that's a Shido offence. One more for either one of these, and they'll lose it on default. They don't want to do that. Kap uh, Kapelik now being controlled. Harasawa has the grip that he wants. Is he going to put that Uchi matter in? Ah, oh, it's Kapelik! So now Harasawa's got to go in. Harasawa's being told by Suzuki that, that you have to attack. Oh, that was close. So now Harasawa starts. Two good techniques, two good attacks by Kropelik. Harasawa needs a good technique. Well, he's trying to attack first, isn't he, there, Kapalik? Good series of attacks there. 
I think he's got one last chance, Harasawa. Time to get tidied up. Bit of a cut. Well, Harasawa now is going off here. I tell you now, if he doesn't attack one more time, and it won't be forgotten by the referee. Well, Suzuki in the coaching chair has got his head down. He knows exactly what the score is here because if Harasawa doesn't attack, as soon as they grip up, he's going to lose this. Kapalek just gathers his, his thoughts and he's thinking, I've got to get the first attack in. Certainly, that's what I would be thinking if I was him. On the brink of the world title here, Lucas Kapalek, as Harazawa Hisayoshi makes his way back to the tatami. He'll have time to tidy up his gi, wrap the obi around, Nothing fancy here. Refocus. And we'll be underway again. So here we go. Now he's got to do it, and he knows he's got to do it. He has to put it in. Uchimata Kouchi. Uchimata! Saved himself. Got the attack in. He absolutely, <laughs> Suzuki, other than going on there and sticking his leg in there, knew that he had to do that. Yeah, the coach can raise his head again now. <laughs> he knew it. And, and uh, Suzuki, I could see by his actions there, other than really going on there and physically doing it for him, he knew Ooh. that he had to do that. Golden so now, score. yeah. Kapalik oh, straight oh, in. Uchi. Uchimata, somebody's going to go! Oh! And they go down. I think the elbow was out there. Yeah. It wasn't a score. I don't think it was a score either. Yeah. Nor does Vladimir Nutsabidze because he didn't give it. So the referee, had he thought that there was a score, would have given that. I think he did the right thing there. Yeah. Well, he went down heavy, that's for sure. Bit of a face plant there. Got a fight on our hands. Yeah. Okay. Well, he went on his own back anyway, uh, yeah. Kapalik. Was it a direct attack? I think it was a counter. No score. We can press on. Yeah. And away they go yeah. again. Crowd loving this. The last match in the individual competition. What a cracker. <laughs> Palak searching for a second hand on. Arazawa not that keen. Here no, it's going to happen now. Now what's going to happen? Can't be far away. Is he going to get the last chance to do it? Yeah. He needs to just get on with it, Arazawa. Slipping away from him. Oh! No reasonable effort. I think the referee would have been better just to let them go here. Yeah. Just got to catch the momentum here. Mm -hmm. Good point. One more attack. It's going to be down to one more attack. Look at that, fighting for it. Now Kapelik. Kapelik's going to go in. Harasawa's got the sleeve and he goes in with the Uchimata. And it's Kapelik, oh! Yeah, nothing, no, they went down, there, that was yeah. Kapelik's uh, technique there. He attempted the Satemi Waza. 
wasn't the tidiest and that's why nothing came of it but it was definitely Kapalik attempting the set to Temi was up well, I gotta say 100% <laughs> for both these because they're giving it their all 1 minute 31 into golden score anybody's match this He's hardly got any, anything here to, to tuck his uh, judogi in, and it's because his forearms, I tell you now, are absolutely blowing. Referee can't do it for him. Here we go again. <laughs> it's down to that sleeve. He who dominates the sleeve. Kapalik pushing forward, Uchimata there from Harasawa. Harasawa being told there just to tuck his jacket in. Again, here we go. A brave man to give him a shido for not tucking it in properly. Might be a riot in here. I think there would be. I don't think he'll get a, a better chance. Oh, drop Cianagi this time. Now then, has Capellic got it? Oh, oh he just pulls just out. There, yeah. Well, this is it now. You know, you never want to show your opponent that you're spent and he's finding it <laughs> difficult to get to his feet. Kapalik may, may sense, sense a win here. Saying that, and I still think that Harasawa is dangerous. And I still think he's got the Ouchi or the Uchi Mata. But Kapalik looks the stronger of the two. Oh! Oh, a chance on the ground now. Well, now, is he going to do it? He's got the chance there. He's no, not got uh, he the know, power he, for yeah, it. Yeah, he know, and he knows that Harazawa's got it blocked. Yeah. Nice, though. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Right idea. Oh. Well, I'm sure some people are going to pick up on the fact that he's tucking his jacket in all the time. It's just the world final, guys. You know, you don't give the deciding Shido on a, on a, when they're both fighting their hearts out here. He, look, he looks bruised, Neil. He does. How up? Three minutes into golden score. Now it's going to happen. Hanasawa's got to attack. He and has to put he, it in. He has He'll to, have to go for it. He's going to have to put it in. Uchimata. And he didn't have the power to tip him there. That just saved him. If, if that had been Kapalik's attack, that would have been it. I think that absolutely. They're so close here. Yeah, and, and that and not to he's done the right thing here. He's told him open the gear up and tidy it up properly because he just couldn't get it done. So he said, right, open it up and get it done properly, and we're going to continue. But he looks battered, doesn't he? Look, <laughs> what a final! <laughs> In they go again. Kapalik pushing forwards. Now On Kapalik, now this is where he's dangerous, looking for it, that's it, that's it, that's going to cost him almost sure Kapalik's going to get this now. I think that Harasawa is going to get the third Shido. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, I've seen enough. 
Yeah. It's it, it's all over. Capellix world champion. Well, that was magnificent. It was a superb fight. It really was. Hadasawa accepts it. It was a, an epic contest between these two. And for anybody out there who says, oh, but we didn't see an Ippon, all right, you just saw a magnificent fight, a tactical fight between two great judoka, two best in the world at the moment, and they went head to head, gave it their all. It was all about catching the sleeve. Could they catch the sleeve? Could they dominate? Could they get two hands on? And in the end, well, they were both spent, but one was just a little bit more tired than the other. Well, Japan's search for a super heavyweight champion continues because not since Munita Yasuyuki back in 2003 in Osaka have they managed to grab the, the well, plus super heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super heavyweight, plus yeah. 100. They've had an open, but they haven't had the plus 100 kilo category. And really, that's because it's been dominated by Teddy Rinner. Okay, last year we had Guram Tusishvili. This year we've got Lucas Kopalik. But before that, it was Ohm by Teddy Renner and way back in 2003 so it's a long time long time coming that search continues Ladies and gentlemen, you can see the highlights of this last final on the screen Well, it was in 2014 in Chelyabinsk where Lukas Kapalik won the under 100 kilo category. Five years later, and an Olympic gold medal in between. <laughs> He comes to take the gold medal in the plus 100 kilo category. We've got two awarding ceremonies to come. We'll come back to the plus 100 kilo category, but just before that, we've got the awarding ceremony for the woman in the plus 78 kilo category. That's coming up now. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the women over 78 kilo. The medals will be presented by Ambassador of the International Judo Federation and member of the IGF Medical Commission, Dr. Antonio Castro. The medals are being presented by IJF Ambassador, Dr. Castro, and the first of the bronze medals goes to Asahina Sara of Japan. And a bronze medal also for Kaira Sayed of Turkey. Silver medal goes to Idalis Ortiz of Cuba. Just as well as you've got Dr. Castro presenting the medal then. Yeah, what a, what a great <laughs> champion she is. But the gold medal goes to Sone Akira of Japan. Well, this is a gold medal that they really wanted to get the Japanese were struggling. In Japanese terms, they were struggling. Three gold medals up to this point. Now they have four.
式会社代表取締役社長水野明人さんです Six silver medals, of course, and five bronzes. Still the country with depth. But, and this is the amazing thing, France, of course, with three gold medals, but uh, it's the amount of countries that uh, have managed to get gold medals That is truly amazing. The flowers will be presented by the IG guest. Well, I think when it comes to the Olympic place, Sonny is definitely in the lead now. And it's been between her and Sarah Asahina. I think a gold medal at the World Championships goes a long way towards it. Now the national anthem of Japan. The family picture. Asahina and Seat were the bronze medal winners. The silver was picked up by Ortiz, and the gold medal went to Sonny. I think they now like to have, after they've had that family picture and then they've had the winning quartet, they also like to have just the gold medal winner up there for a little while and Krista de Gucci of Canada wasn't quite sure about it and she was rushing off and then she had to come back and then she had to rush off again and that, that was, was kind of nice wasn't it? Quite comic <laughs> and then the other side of the coin was Fonseca who by that time knew full well that they wanted him up there and he didn't want to come off <laughs> it's taken me so long to get up there I might as well stay Yeah, they want you. <laughs> There she is. Congratulations to the new world champion, the 478 kilos for women, Sore Akira, Japan.
smile and family, I would think, up there. Celebrating. Could very well be. The win. We may have a few highlights then before the presentation of the plus 100 kilo category. We come now to the awarding ceremony for the men in the plus 100 kilo category. The medals will be presented by the Vice President of the International Judo Federation and President of the Oceanian Judo Union, Mr. Gregoria Tomio. Bronze medalists are the first of the bronze medals goes to Roy Meyer of the Netherlands. There's a bronze medal also for Kim Min Jong of the Republic of Korea. They both excelled, didn't they? Both these fighters excelled themselves. Silver medal goes to Harazawa Hisayoshi of Japan. The gold medal goes to Lucas Kapalik of the Czech Republic. Part 24 group trophies will be presented by the President and Representative Director of Part 24. Tsukimashite, Part 24 show no zonte desu. Part 24 kabushiki kaisha, Daihiro Torishimari Yakusha Chou, Nishikawa Kouetsu Samayori, Part 24 group trophy no zonte desu. Couple of great performances from these two. Bronze medals in the World Championships. This man here, well, he's been world champion now. 
with two different weights. Arasawa, good performance, really handled himself well. When it didn't quite go his way, that final was epic. Now, of course, the, the picture where they can all smile a little bit. The new champion. Kapalik, of course, his second world title. Arasawa, Silva, Roy Maya, and Kim pick up the bronzes. And, uh, well, after seven days of uh, amazing competition here in Japan, Japan at last come out on top in the medals uh, with their four gold, six silver, five bronzes. Uh, they've done amazingly, not as amazingly as they would have wanted. Nine different countries uh, can now be proud that they now have a world champion. The medals have been divided worldwide. Uh, tomorrow we have the team event to finish these incredible world championships. Lots of judo action still to come and I promise you it's going to be a judo fest. Until then, from me, Neil Adams and Sheldon Franco-Rooks, it's goodbye for now until tomorrow. Once again, congratulations. The heavyweight category world champion, Lukas Kripali, Czech Republic.